Sure, I'll send a team right out. Blunt force trauma, back of the head. Wounds interesting, an irregular shape, somewhat triangular. It's the murder weapon's signature. Here's something you might find interesting. A small piece of foreign fibrous material. Definitely not skull. The fragment I found appears similar in color to the photograph, so the bird's bill might be consistent with the wound. But without the real thing, it's just a guess. Well, based on the victim's liver temperature, dead less than two hours, under ideal conditions the body cools two degrees the first hour, then one degree after that, so we can put it around 5.30 p.m. Way ahead of you. Taking fingerprints off a of victim's body is part of my routine. Here you are. Toxicology tests show high concentrations of diazepam, a benzodiazepine commonly prescribed for anxiety disorders. Well, it's not entirely unusual, but your prospective bride already had a honeymoon. Semen in the vaginal canal. No forced entry, presumably consensual sex. I've got a sample for you. Of course. Glad to have your perspective. Squirrel hair. Commonly used to make paintbrushes. Maybe we should find our reclusive artist. Wall spatter matches the Vic's blood. It's a start. Links her to the crime scene. This verifies Ackerman stepped in the victim's blood. So, Rachel and her fiancé did kiss and make up tonight. Evidence of sperm shows Mark scored a home run. But look at this. He's got a record with a history of violence. So let's get brass on this bad boy. The prints on the pedestal are Ackerman's. It's no surprise, it's his gallery. Of course, he's still a suspect. We've done all we can with that item.
So you think that hawk sculpture might be the murder weapon, huh? I'll get my boys to start searching for it immediately. Check back later. Our friendly neighborhood art dealer opened the gallery 12 years ago and his record's clean. I found some online reviews saying Ackerman is an overcharging, tasteless fraud. But hey, that's no crime. Even a self-proclaimed genius like Patrick Milton can't escape the electric company. And we got his address from their bill. Here you go. We've tracked every hotel and resort in Vegas. No small task. But we've got them registered at the Romanoff, which is also where their wedding and reception is scheduled. Mark Stock's here to identify his fiancé's body. He says he's eager to help. So let's give him the chance. We know this is difficult, Mr. Stock. You have our condolences. You don't have to pretend to feel anything. You didn't know, Rachel. Who did this to her? Well, that's what we're trying to find out, sir. Best we can tell, you were the last person to see her alive. That's not true. Then who was, Mr. Stock? Her killer, of course. Look, I was only with Rachel another maybe 15 minutes after Ackerman went off to mail a package or something. I had a previous engagement. And what was that? My bachelor party at Orgasma. You mean the strip joint? Yeah. You think a bachelor party's going down at a library or maybe a church basement? A guy I used to play ball with recommended him to me. Some favor. As far as I'm concerned, Ackerman's a pretentious sleazeball. His words as good as the paper it isn't written on, if you, if you get me. And this crap with him and this clown Milton. I don't remember when I was ever so frustrated. Listen, I loved Rachel. I worshipped that woman. But she had a temper like a rabid monkey. And when Ackerman and Milton started jerking us around over that work, man, Rachel went off like a bomb. When that girl got mad, whoa. <laughs> She'd get in your face and your eyeballs and teeth would melt. She wanted her natural beauty preserved forever, displayed at the reception so her family and friends in the whole damn world could see her towering majesty. She insisted that damn artist would show up, and the owner was off on his errand. He left the keys with us, in case he wasn't back by six so we could lock up for him. He gave you the keys to the gallery? Yeah. Rachel and me were supposed to lock up at six. Ackerman headed out with his package, we had our little fling in back, and then... Well, I had a bachelor party to go to. I was a cocky kid college star who wound up in the minor leagues. I was too damn dumb to know I should just pay my dues like everybody else. And I made a lot of enemies, throwing my weight and my temper around. And I paid the price for it. That incident got me blacklisted from the league and ended any hope of a major league career. And it was my own damn fault, okay? And since then, hey, man, you're looking at a pacifist. But maybe you had a relapse, snapped under all this wedding pressure. After that bust, I started seeing a court-appointed shrink, and I am Mr. Chill now. Nothing gets to me, not even Rachel's temper. I look back on how I used to be, and man, I was not cool. I was a world-class ass. That's not me anymore. I loved Rach, and her family was going to set me up in a sporting goods shop that would have given me a whole new lease on life. You think I would have flushed that down the john like I did my baseball career over an argument about some damn artwork? No way, man. No way. I didn't kill her. I loved her. But there is one situation where I might lose it again. Might have, what'd you say? A relapse. How's that? When you catch this bastard, if I get my hands on him, no guarantees, man. No guarantees. 
Of course. We're on the same team, guys. Find who did this. Find him. Oh, you know, just had our fun with some cheap champagne. I was supposed to meet the guys downtown at 6 before we headed for Orgasma and the Bash, so it, hell, must have been, what, 5.15? And I had to put pedal to the metal to make it on time, even so. Nice pad. It's not what I expected, though. This girl spends thousands on artwork for the wedding, but she opts for the junior suite. People and their priorities. That artwork was definitely due the day of the murder. Wow, the European honeymoon of a lifetime. Not anymore. Brass can track down this number for us. A good idea to be thorough, but nothing's there. <laughs> 